Hi, welcome back to the Independent Thinking Online Children's Book Festival for 2021 um, that we're doing in partnership with Sue Atkins, the amazing Sue Atkins from the parenting coach from television and her Sue Atkins Book Club. Um, I've been speaking to authors on all sorts of books over the course of this festival, really interesting people with really interesting books for children. Um, and for parents as well, and um, for something different now. Um, through this network, I've been able, I, I met a lovely lady called Ellie Powling from Speaking of Books, who, well, I'll get her to introduce herself, but she has a different angle on books and schools and the benefits and how we can bring the authors, the books and the children together. So I'll allow Ellie to introduce herself and then we'll have to have a little conversation about how schools can best benefit from having an author either walk through the door or in this new world, uh, appear on a screen. So Ellie, welcome to the to the book festival. Good to see you. Thanks Ian, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Ellie Powling. I run a specialist education events company called Speaking of Books. We are a family business started about 25 years ago by our mum, uh, Jan Powling. Um, my background was in media before I started doing um, working for Speaking of Books about 18 years ago. So I have been doing this for a while now. Um, and I'm hoping just to give some useful sort of insights um, for how to sort of make a, a, an author visit um, and make the most of your day uh, as, a, as a busy teacher. And, and author visits are, I mean, that, is that a big thing that primary schools, I mean, forget the pandemic stuff, is that how many sorts of, how many schools have you been into, your company been into in the years? How many children have you met? Oh, well, probably thousands. There will yeah. be thousands. Obviously, we've been going sort of 25 years. Um, and yeah, we've had, we've had, visits going on to schools all over the world um all over the uk um yeah so it's a, it, it is a big thing yeah yeah luckily yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. all may it continue <laughs> yeah excellent so so what are the before we look at the nitty-gritty of of what might entail and what schools can do to make sure they prepare best for the visit and i imagine there's sort of there's the there's a preamble to the visit there's a visit itself and there's the what happens afterwards as opposed to it's a special afternoon because some ladies walk through the door and read us a story and then we go back to sats um, so <laughs> look at all of that as well but 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 in terms of the benefits why should schools where they're under so much pressure time resources time in the classroom catch up post pandemic and all of that what why should schools think about and what are the benefits of having the author come through the door um there are many um the the wonderful National Literacy Trust actually um, produced a report in 2019. Um, I will just read actually some of these just to make sure that I get some yeah, facts yeah. sort of correct to hear. But um, they found that children who had a visit from an author in their academic year were twice as likely to read above their expected um, level for their age. Um, so 31% versus 17% uplift in that. Um, they were more likely to enjoy reading. 68% um, versus 47% who hadn't had an author visit um, and writing as well. So they saw sort of an increase in enjoyment in children doing their own writing. Um, that was 44% versus 32%. And they were most likely to sort of have a higher confidence in their reading and in their writing. Um, and those were going up by over sort of 10% um, each time. So th wow. there, are, there are huge sort of benefits from that point of view. Um, Another reason is that it, what, we, what we refer to is the kind of the literacy triangle. Um, it's connecting the child with the book, with the author. Um, so author visits promote literacy by connecting the, the child with the book, with the author. And we know that children are more likely to enjoy reading and enjoy a book by an author that they feel a connection to. They're also more likely to consider themselves writers and sort of give it a go if they've met and worked with someone and, and been shown that it's that it's a great thing um, to do. And I'm sure you and I, Ian, and um, most people sort of watching this could bang on for hours about the sort of the importance of, of the creative arts in education. And, and it, you know, it's certainly true to say that creativity, be that sort of music, art, writing, acting, dancing, cooking, are all sort of pursuits that bring enormous sort of mental health benefits. Um, and they can't be replaced by technology. So creativity in all its forms um, is a brilliant kind of future proof career choice um, that we need to be encouraging um, in, our, in our young people. And one of the ways that we do this um, is by giving them access. Yeah. Is there any, is, I mean, those, those statistics are quite striking, aren't they? If there's any, yeah. any teacher hesitant 
about having an author visit coming in and then uh, because they need to focus on their literacy and their sats and everything. Well, and they might need to, to you know, to pitch to their head teacher for the budget or pitch to their governors or whoever, you know, whoever that is, is sort of holding the purse strings. Well, so that, that's, as I say, it was a National Literacy Trust uh, report in June 2019. So very Googleable, yeah. um, And those stats are kind of are all there to sort of back up. Is there any research, and I'm putting you on the spot here because they don't know, but is there any research in terms of children from maybe from poorer backgrounds having access to, or is it? You know, I actually think further into the report, yes, it does mention that. Also, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's worth sort of unpicking it. I just, it what, what made me think of that when you talk about access to the arts and getting engaged in the arts is that for our book, the um, independent thinking book, The Working Class, the research that shows when children have access to the arts or engaged in artistic endeavours, the benefits in terms of what goes on in the curriculum, but also things like are more likely to vote, are more likely to take part, are more likely to volunteer, are more likely to, to be involved in citizenship, citizenship ac activities, yeah. as well as, as you mentioned, the well-being side of things. So there's so many benefits, as well as the improving their, their literacy, their reading and their, and, and their writing. Yes. Schools are one of the places, you know, lots of our children are not living in houses, kind of stuff full of books and, you know, with with you know heavy book bookshelves like, like, like our bookshelves behind well, us i was gonna say you can tell what we do but um yeah, yeah. But, you know and, and not not finger pointing and not judging but you know lo lots of lots of homes don't are not like that and you know i'm sure they're getting other stuff as well but this is one of the things that that, that schools can do yeah 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 no no i like that i like that very much so and, and talk about that that triangle again because one of the things that you were saying is it it, it not only improves their their skills but it improves their enjoyment of it as well and their confidence. So you're working at that sort of emotional level as well. So is that is that the triangle that you talked about? That's with the, the triangle. The so the triangle, so it's almost like child at the top, author, book. Um, so it's just, just making the kind of connection between the two. And, um, you know, one of my great friends and clients, Michael Rosen, always talks about sort of children, when you talk to them about books, when they meet an author, um, they are making the connection between the spoken word and the written word. Um, and again, lots of things that, that we know is that some many, many children find the spoken word more comfortable. Um, so this is one of the ways, again, that you can kind of bridge that gap mm -hmm. um, and make um, books kind of theirs. Yeah, and Mike, you mentioned Michael Rosen, so he's one of the people. He's, he, he, if schools want to him, they come to you in order to book him into for their school. So, and I've heard it, I've heard him speak a couple of times. I'm sure some of the people watching this will as well. And he is, he's he, he, he's the one to beat. He's pretty in terms good. Of, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Yeah, he does all right. He does all right for himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite like well, working with him. <laughs> what makes a good author? an author visit what, what what does the author do that makes it come alive as opposed to sitting there reading their book and then going out again well that's interesting it, it, it's yes that's funny sort of you should because that's one of the things obviously that I would want to sort of talk about about what a teacher kind of should be should be looking for and also any sort of aspiring authors out there who want to do author visits it's my opinion and sort of belief that you need to design a really great session um that many of our teachers are extremely sort of gifted storytellers themselves they can read well they are teachers are performing day in day out that's part of what they do so I think I think a, a high quality author visit needs to do a lot more um, than just have somebody standing up at the front reading a book because a teacher is going to struggle to justify a budget um, I mean I've been a chair of governors so you know <laughs> I understand when somebody stands in front of you you know wanting some money and you know schools are not funded as they should be so every penny is precious and needs to be spent mm. so wisely and carefully um, so an author visit a good one has has got to sort of do do more than than that so I think it's you know it's got to talk about you know <laughs> somebody else somebody's own journey to writing and writing a particular book that they might be talking about or a series of books or you know so in an age appropriate way so you might have somebody like Jeremy Strong for example who um has got books right the way across the primary age range so there's somebody like Tony Bradman um and they will sort of pitch their talk appropriately again as any any you know good teacher does every single day um, so they might talk about different titles that are kind of age appropriate. They might show where they do their writing, the various stages that a book's, book goes through, but always kind of relating it back to 
what a child can do. So, you know, doing it, showing them, you know, that ideas are everywhere, showing them that, you know, he, here's your notebook that he's scrawled with ideas. And it's lovely for children, I think, to see that kind of those post-it notes with, you know, scrawled handwriting on. And then look, that's the book that it became. Um, and then there's all the sort of the stages in between. So I think that that's that's always a sort of a lovely thing. And again, just, you know, encouraging children that they have got something to say and you know, um, so encourage, encouraging being a reader, being a writer. Um, mm. One of the first things writers will always say, you know, what, what you felt, well, I was a reader. I was a reader first, then I, then I was a writer. Um, and that's, a, you know, that's a great message um, to get across. And then, of course, you get into the, the area of the authors that feel sort of comfortable doing writing workshops. Um, and again, those need to be sort of well, well planned out, like any, as I say, like any teacher does with a great lesson um that they're they're well planned so some authors will will not only read and talk about their book and the journey they got to their book and the journey of their book they might also work with the children in their own writing as well is that is that a writing workshop yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you might have people doing i don't know what have i got people doing sort of cartooning workshops i've got people who do sessions on um spoken word poetry performance poetry rap um creating great characters um the journey you know how to build a great plot um all, all of that sort of stuff that that can be all part of a really really great author visit and it also steps away a little bit from sort of what teachers do um but it also should leave the teachers with plenty to follow up on yeah no i like that oh and, and talking of rap I'll, I'll send you the link to rhythmical mic one of the independent oh, picking associates. I like, the, I like a, the sound of rhythmical mic. He's a performance <laughs> artist who goes into schools, including special schools and proofs and all sorts of things, um, talking about his story, but also talking about his his, uh, um, his, 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 his and sharing poetry and, and getting the, the, the young people, the children, to sort of to deliver their own poetry as well. It's incredibly powerful. Oh, amazing. And sometimes, and I'm sure your authors will see this as well, that the child who hasn't, that hasn't been brought out to them for whatever reason in the traditional classroom, suddenly with a new face, new rules, see, they, suddenly it. this thing comes out to them that they didn't know was there. It's and the teacher meant to be sort of complementary and certainly not replacing, you know, the incredible, we are, at, at Speaking of Books, we are, you know, I'm a huge fan and admirer of teachers. Yeah. Um, so are all sort of my clients. This is not in any way meant to sort of, replace or anything like that it is in addition to um and a complimentary and again you know everybody needs a, a sort of a fresh face and teachers have so much on their plates sometimes it's nice for them to also have just somebody coming in you know fresh and new and doing something and giving them some some new ideas and encouragement themselves because teachers are talented people they are actually some of the most amazing writing comes from them yeah 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 no I, that, 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 that's very true the, I talked about the the sort of the three parts of it, so the preamble to it, the, the actual day, we, we, and we've touched on some of that, and then what happens afterwards. So, yeah. and I was aware of this you know, in schools, and when I was a teacher as well, you you plan this thing, and it's just the thing. Whereas actually, if you planned it properly and planned the preamble to it better, you get more from the the, the thing, the event, the visit, whatever. Well, that's and then it. you follow it up, so it doesn't just become well. That was a that was a bit of a one off. That was a nice event. I didn't have to do any maths. Or whatever. So it doesn't become a, just a kind of a standalone yeah, thing that yeah. we didn't so have to what, talk about again. What, so what sorts of things can schools be doing in the build-up to an author visit and then and afterwards? Well, that's it. I mean, again, I get lots of sort of, oh, we, you know, we want a big name or, you know, we want somebody that the children have heard of and this, that and the other. Well, this is actually also, again, the beauty of if you find somebody who is brilliant in front of the kids, they may not be famous. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not the right person for your school and where teachers are in a fantastic position is they can create a buzz they can promote they can make sure their children have heard about them um they can they can do all of that and that's that's where the kind of i'm really passionate about spending the money wisely and say somebody like me like my job would be to listen to a teacher to what they're trying to achieve um to listening to you know tell me about this particular cohort what are their interests and passions what are their kind of what are their things that they need encouragement with that they need support with um th there's all kinds of things and then you recommend the right person for them at this time um and and so that's that's sort of one of the ways and again it's sort of again it's an opportunity 
for all kinds of learning that this is a this is an opportunity to model how to have a guest how to be a host um that you talk to the children about you know about you know where we get where are we going to they might need little breaks and a bit of bit of quiet time you know we're going to give them some lunch what lunch do you think you know we're going to do all of this and can you be in charge of making sure that they know where the loo is if they need it and this is you know we'll get them a cup of, all of that sort of stuff that can go along with it with any visitor I mean it doesn't have to be you know an author visitor but you, you know we should be having all kinds of people in schools talking to children um about about their work mm -hmm. so that so that our kids can kind of see oh I didn't know you could do that for a job or oh I didn't know and that's part of you know what what it's all about so and so building children into the planning process uh, I can see and that, that ramps up the excitement and that ramps up the excitement if you're the kind of the person oh well we're getting you know we, we'll have some lovely things where you know where stations are within walking distance of the school so the teacher might say well I'm going to pick three of you or four or whatever is, you know, we're going to walk down to the station. We're going to meet them off their train and we're going to walk them to our school and welcome them to our area. Cause you know, your author might be getting off the station, getting off the train somewhere they've never been before. And all of those things make it more than just the session itself. Mm. I like that. I've never been met off the train by a load of students or children before. Yeah, so. no, I've, I, we've, we've, we've had that a few times and you know, it, it again, it always, what a gorgeous thing do and it, again it just makes the most sort of 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 the day yeah. um and all you know authors are humans too oh, they can say humanizes them doesn't it it's nice it's yes human. and it might make you know they might be feeling a sort of a bit no you know they're kind of like all right i've arrived here i don't yeah. you know where am i it's right here is it and yeah. you know again all of that should be yeah well in hand but actually if they're met by a load of gorgeous faces and a welcoming teacher it says, "Oh, come on, we're, you know, we're going to we've come to welcome you and walk up the road with you. What a lovely, what a lovely thing!" Nice. And apart from seeing them back onto the train at the end of the day, yeah. <laughs> um, what? How? How are school? What are the best examples you've got of schools in terms of the follow up, the the, the making it last? The making it last again yes. is sort of getting the buy in from from all your teaching staff. And again, that's you know that's 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 not easy. Teachers are under all kinds of sort of conflicting pressures, um, and this, that, and the other. But Again, a high quality author visit should be a form of CPD. They should be able to sit in there and, and listen mm. carefully to what's going on and generate loads of ideas. As I say, I always, you know, teachers amaze me. Um, they come up with all kinds of ideas off, off the sort of back. So it's almost just a kind of, oh, you know, don't sit doing sort of your, your marking. You use the time to just to listen to somebody else don't put yourself under loads of pressure and think about, just take that hour to concentrate and be really in the room with your children. And as I say, teachers are incredible. They then come up with all kinds of things, mm. um, but just but just little things, you know, then you can refer back to and say, what, you know, what did Jeremy teach, talk to us about where ideas come from? Um, do you remember what, I don't know, what Tony said about, you know, da, 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 and they're referring back all the time and, and again demonstrating to the children that what they were listening to mattered um and, yeah. and is of use yeah um, I like, uh, using the term cpd i hadn't thought of it that way i'm thinking of it it's the author coming in and it's it, what the author can bring out of the children in in a complementary way to what the teacher's doing but actually thinking of it in terms of cpd it's, again te teachers are like writers from that point of view they get their ideas everywhere don't they they get ideas for brilliant lessons in the supermarket and you know yeah. getting in the garage getting their cars you know yeah. and this is just another thing that you can put in front of teachers and they will do something incredible with it that helps with the budgeting maybe that, that you might be able to tap into a cpd budget if there's if there's a bit of that available rather than well any... and again I, I mean i've got loads of clients that can do sort of days who where they do a day with the children um yeah. and then do a, a sort of an inset cpd as well or sometimes you know again if there's if it's sort of traveling possible it's really nice sometimes to do a cpd at sort of twilight and then have the author in the school the next day so you've yeah. heard all the kind of the theory and this that and the other and then the next day they've got to do it so the teachers they? can be primed for what they're going to experience and what they're going to see and yeah. what to look out for and all of that so there's all kinds of ways of, of sort of of doing it do parents get invited in in schools as well to for the author visit yeah well one of my sort of favorite things i mean again i've got a, a, a couple of brilliant um performance poets people like zohab zikan um christian foley who 
is, is quite well known as the wrapping teacher. Um, they do some terrific sessions, getting the kids sort of writing their own um, performance poetry. And then you can have a lovely sort of wrap up session at the end of the day with some of the kids who feel comfortable um, can perform their stuff um, for the children. For the, for the families. Yeah. And if it's a one of, I think, again, a really, really important part of, of a day is a book signing session um, at the end of the day. And again, schools, please invite parents in, you know, get a, get a, a you know, a really good bookseller, preferably an independent, to come in um, and support the event yeah. by running a book sale. There's loads of people out there doing brilliant things, including our own roving books. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's a, an absolutely vital part yeah. of, of an author visit. And then the child's got the, got the thing, they've had the experience, but now they've got the object they can take home and read. Again, it's, it's the thing, isn't it? Book, book owners become book readers. Um, yeah. So this, the, again, this is an opportunity. And when you've had or got an author in the school, the profile of reading will never be higher. So you seize on it and send them home clutching a book rather than yeah. their PS4 for once, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, no, that's, that's really interesting. That, that, well, that's 20 minutes has gone quickly, Ellie. Thank you for all oh, that. that. Oh. <laughs> let's, 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 let's end with three things then for teachers. If, if, if they, you have to say, what are the three things to, to bear in mind when you're planning an author visit for any of the teachers watching this who are inspired to set out and, and, and do one? What, what three things should they bear in mind? Um, three things, get the right person. So either, um, come to a specialist like myself or reach out to your networks, you know, um, either sort of local schools, social media, um, for, for who people have had and have been great. Um, so you're getting that kind of proper recommendations for people. So that's, that's sort of one. And yeah, don't get too bound up with the kind of must be a famous name. Get somebody who's going to come in and do a great job and then almost then make, raise their profile in your school so almost do it, the, do it the other way around. Um, have a decent budget. Again, we're interested in teaching children about creativity. Um, and I, for one thing, that starts with making it a viable career option. Um, and otherwise the, the creative um, arts just becomes a kind of pursuit for, for children who don't need to earn a living. Um, and actually what we should be supporting and cultivating is children who've got talent and commitment, um, no matter what their background is. So the answer is they've all got to put food in their fridges and that starts now and we show them and we pay for people's time and expertise. Um, so that's a, a budget. And then I think being really available on the day to really sort of, you know, plan, plan a day that is properly kind of realistic that is well worked out in terms of sort of you know I get to programs sometimes that in that are kind of 9 15 to 10 15 10 15 to 11 15 and you need the, the writer needs a kind of a moment just to catch their breath um, but also just the logistical things of they might need to change venue within your school you might be transitioning one group in and another group out settling them all down um, and all of that sort of sort of thing and just your day will run better if you have accounted for all of those types of things and you'll stay running to time. Yeah. Everybody be, will be nice and calm. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and give to the kids. The whole point is that it's a performance. You're not kind of thinking, oh, crikey, was, we've shaved 10 minutes off because, you know, he had to go to the loo and then we got lost trying to find, you know, yeah. all of that, all of that. And, and involve the kids. Involve yeah. the kids. If there's a venue change, get the kids to... to guide them through yeah yeah no that's right. so where can people get hold of you ellie i know others uh, are available but where, so what, what other what, other agencies are available but uh, i am um www.speakingofbooks.co.uk or i'm on twitter as at speaking of bks okay books <laughs> and they can email you or they can contact you that yeah ellie at speaking of yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i've got one of those fancy buttons as well on on my website where they can people can just book it sometimes you just need to have a chat yeah about your school and yeah. what you want to do and then it's up for me to to me to sort of go oh, well have you considered da, 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 da. and then you've got a range of options where teachers can choose what's best for them lovely all right that's been really interesting really useful 
Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you and good luck with the next Thank you, and you too. Thanks for having me. Okay, thank you.